Willow Jean Prime. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. What reports has he seen on the strength of the government's finances? The Mr. Honourable Grant Robertson. Mr. Speaker, in addition to the positive reviews from bank economists earlier this week, yesterday Moody's Investors Services said that Budget 2018 preserved New Zealand's strong public finances and underscored the government's quote very high fiscal strength. Moody's noted how this government was able to boost expenditure on families, health, education, housing and infrastructure while maintaining the fiscal capacity to buffer the economy from any future shocks. Supplementary. Why is it important for the government to maintain fiscal discipline? Mr Speaker, it is every government's responsibility to look out for future generations whilst also making the essential investments needed now to ensure New Zealanders can access critical public services. In its report, Moody's notes that our budgetary prudence gives us significant policy flexibility to such an extent that we can fund higher spending while keeping the broad direction of fiscal policy unchanged. This comes from taking a responsible approach to debt repayment, more responsible than the previous government, by the fact we're ensuring a level tax playing field and by the fact that the government's policies will stimulate economic growth rather than just relying on the housing market and population growth to drive activity. Supplementary. And what does Moody's say about the government's plan to invest a net $42 billion in capital over the next five years? Oh, Mr Speaker, Moody's notes that this stronger infrastructure investment, $10 billion more than the previous government had planned, will improve the supply capacity of the economy and bolster productivity in the long run. In terms of specific projects, Moody's notes that a recent pickup in new building permits points to strengthening residential construction supported by development related to KiwiBuild. They do caution about labour constraints, which highlights why our policy of free post-secondary training and education for apprentices and those undertaking trades training is so important to making our economy more productive, more sustainable and more inclusive. Question number two, the Honourable Paula Benner. Uh, my question is to the Prime Minister. Does she stand